one and done in the 2019 MAC tournament, not the outcome the Quinnipiac men's basketball team was looking for. They fall to the Monmouth Hawks in the quarterfinal round by a final score of 98 to 92. Hello and welcome inside the rebound presented by Q30 Sports. Along Chris alongside Chris Stacy, my name is MJ Baird. Chris, I want to get to your analysis on this in just one moment, but first, let's hear from Monmouth head coach King Rice as he stepped up to the podium after the game. I know sometimes there's these rules and MAC rules. I have a seven-year-old son that some grown men tried to tell me he can't be with his father right now. What kind of rule is that? When a seven-year-old can't be with his father in the biggest win of his season. Where's Rich at? So we can really talk about the thought behind that. Okay, that's ridiculous. And now they're trying to run my seven-year-old out of the locker room. He comes on the bus with his father. The players treat him like a little brother. He loves those guys to death. He thinks he's on the team. You'll see him, he'll be the one in, running up and down the stairs doing the exercises that the players do. And he can't be with his dad. We need to calm down everybody and let a kid be with his father. Let a father be with his son. All right, Chris, some choice words from King Rice after the game. What are your takeaways from that? The thing I took away from that is are some things are bigger than basketball. King Rice also said that he, his son feels like he is a part of the team, and he was a little bit disappointed that his son couldn't celebrate he, what he said was the biggest win of the year with his team. All right, so let's dig into the game a little bit, Chris. First off, a very hot start for the oh, Quinnipiac yeah. Bobcats. You know, kind of just take us through that beginning of the game. Well, it all started off with Jacob Ragoni hitting a three in the first possession for Quinnipiac, and then he hit another, and then he hit another, okay. and then Cam Young joined into the party, and it seemed like Quinnipiac was just going to dominate Monmouth from the start. That turned out not to be the case. We'll get into that a little bit later, but a perfect start. You couldn't ask for anything else for, for Quinnipiac. Unfortunately, they just couldn't keep it going later into the game. Yeah, so, uh, you know, perfect transition there, Chris. As we talk about this second half, the Monmouth Hawks get this, folks, a 21-3 to run. 21 points for Monmouth for, to only three for Quinnipiac at one point in one stretch there. Chris, that had to be the changing point in the yeah, game. Yeah, and it, you know, it, came, it was unexpected. You know, Quinnipiac also came out firing in that second half, started three for three behind the arc once again. But Monmouth really putting on the pressure on, on defense and then turning, those po turning the turnovers into offense. And they also dominated in the paint. This, they scored 42 points in the paint compared to Quinnipiac's 16. So a little bit of a disparity there. And you know that, that turned out to be the difference in the game. They ended up running away with this one. We probably stopped scoring at the same rate. You know, I think our scoring had been carrying us, trading baskets. We probably went on a little bit of a dry spell. Um, and they just continued their effort. So, you know, this time of year, you got to be able to get stops, and, and that's probably what we weren't able to do. But um, for a large portion of that, we took our six-point lead, was off of our offense. I never thought our defense got going, even when we had that lead. Yeah, you talk about the, the paint points. Not only was that astounding, but if you look at the box score, too, Monmouth had nine players that, that logged minutes today. Seven of them had double figures. Meanwhile, Quinnipiac had two players with 30-plus. That was Ragoni and Young. But other than that, only one other player had double digits, and it was Rich Kelly with 10. So certainly more depth of scoring and certainly more paint scoring from the Hawks. All right, final thing, Chris. This Quinnipiac season may be over. Mm, depends on if they get an invite, maybe an NIT or CIT invite. But... Right now, the season's over. We have to go on that assumption. What are your takeaways from this season overall? You know, it was a step up from last season. Obviously, they didn't get as far as they did last season in the MAC tournament. They made it to the semifinals last year after defeating the number two seed, Canisius. They obviously lost to them in the quarterfinals this year. But I think this is a step up. Not only just in the regular season, they proved that they were a top five MAC team this year, and they got that top five seed. They had Cam Young come back, which was an extreme help, and it's going to be a big loss for them. And they also had other players step up, like Rich Kelly, really matured this year on the offense. And it, proved himself to be a leader and a true point guard for this Quinnipiac team. He'll be coming back next year, and Rigoni had his moments, especially tonight. I looked for him to come back and have a strong junior season. 